the Super Bowl cast was set when the frustrated Dallas Cowboys, losers of five straight postseason playoff games, knocked off Detroit and San Francisco. The Cowboys had managed a spectacular regular season comeback and once again were determined to silence those who said they were incapable of winning the big game. Sunday, January 17, 1971. Over 80,000 people jammed into the Orange Bowl to witness the last roundup. Unitas Savvy pitted against the doomsday defense. The superb Dallas running game versus the improved Baltimore stopping force. And for a while, it looked like nobody wanted it. Backs divide behind Johnny Yu. Takes the snap, fakes the handoff, back to throw, looks downfield, fires, and it is intercepted by Chuck Holly. At the 28-yard line, across the 30, breaks through one tackle, moves across the 50 in the cold territory to the 46-yard line, and John Unitas himself takes him out of there. In motion to the right side goes Dan Reeves. Also in motion goes Bob Hayes. Morton back to throw, looks downfield, fires the pass. It is incomplete. It was almost intercepted. And there is a flag on the play. I believe it's going to be a holding penalty. The official just pointed his finger at number 73, which is uh, Ralph Neely, the offensive uh, left tackle for the Cowboys. And this ball game is halfway through the first quarter. Whitby in the punt for the Cowboys, standing at the 27 to get the kick away. And he hits a dandy. Gardeen goes back, and he will field it at the 10. Tumble. Scramble for the ball down at the 10-yard line, and the Cowboys have recovered. Inside the Colts 10-yard line as Ron Gardeen fumbled that long, long punt. After two Mike Clark field goals gave Dallas a 6-0 lead early in the second quarter, Unitas on third and 10 called for a pass to Hinton. John goes back to throw again. Sets up. Fires out left side. Incomplete. Taken by John. Goes off the fingertips of the intended receiver. Bounced into the hands of John Mackey and he goes in for the touchdown. He goes in. And the ball was tipped, but it was also touched by one of the Dallas Cowboys, and Bill Renfro is very upset. It was an individual to uh, Eddie Hinton, and I was trying to clear out that area, and uh, I think they went to his home defense, and uh, they were sort of like doubling on uh, Eddie, and uh, when uh, uh, the ball was hit two or three times, but the last man that hit it was a defender, and I knew it was good. I caught it, and then I uh, did my 9-1. It was ruled that Hinton deflected the ball to Mel Renfro, who in turn tipped it to Mackey. In a game of bizarre occurrences, O'Brien's try for the extra point was blocked. Jimmy O'Brien will try the extra point that will put the Colts ahead. There's the snap. The kick is blocked. It is no good, and we have a tie football game. After the Cowboys punted twice and Baltimore once, Unitas again faced third and ten. This time, he was not as lucky. Unitas has them set again. Backs in tight behind him. Takes the snap. Fakes the handoff. Back to throw. In trouble. Rolls out to the left. In trouble again. Going to run with it now. Across the 25. Hit. Costs up the football. And it is recovered by Jeff Rope. Just three plays later. Here are the Cowboys. Out of the huddle. Up to the line of scrimmage. Shift out of the eye formation. Morton takes the snap, fakes the handoff, throws the little pass to Thomas at the 10-yard line, the 5, into the end zone for a touchdown. It was not to be Unitas' day. A vicious tackle by Big George Andre on the next set of downs made sure of that. The Colts held, and off the bench came Morrow, itching to shed the goat horns that had plagued him for two years. First down and 10 yards to go for the Colts, and Earl Morrill is in to do the quarterbacking. Earl Morrill at quarterback. Johnny Unitas shaken up when he was hit and forced to fumble. Earl's done a good job for the Colts in his few appearances this season. Takes the snap, drops back to throw. Fires one upfield. It is complete to Eddie Hinton at the 30 yard line, down to the 25 of the Cowboys. And Bill Renfro makes the stop. Morrill has the team at the line. Takes the snap. Backpedal, throws the short one over the right side, is complete to Jefferson at the 11, breaks the tackle, moves down to the 5, and inside the 5. But then, seconds before the half, a ferocious Dallas goal line stand. There's the snap, the handoff to Boulay, second man through, he is stopped at the one-yard line. Takes the snap, the handoff goes to Boulay, sweep to the right side, he's trying to get in, and he is stopped for no gain, maybe thrown back for a half a yard or so. Morrill has them set. 
Counts it down. Takes the snap. The handoff goes to Boulash. Puts his head down. Rams into the middle. He did not make it into the end zone. Morrill has the team at the line. Counts it down. Takes the snap. Fakes the handoff. Looks. Passes. It is incomplete. It is intended for John Mitchell. And Mitchell could not get to it. Jim Duncan fumbled the second half kickoff. And under a full head of steam, the Cowboys, sensing a score, moved to the Colt two-yard line. But breaks sometimes have a way of evening out. Morton takes the snap. The handoff goes to Thomas. He is still in there. Thomas hits to the one-yard line, stopped by the Colts. Fun away. And a fumble, and the Colts have recovered. Wayne Thomas fumbled that football, and the Baltimore Colts recovered. And it was Jimmy Duncan who drove in there and recovered that fumble. This proved to be the turning point. Instead of trailing 20 to 6, the Colts had the ball and a chance to tie. An O'Brien field goal attempt sailed wide of its mark. But in the early going of the fourth quarter, the Colts had another chance. We'll see what Earl does. Takes the snap. Gives off to Haverlack. It's going to be the flea flicker, but Haverlack is having trouble finding a receiver. Fires. It is complete to Eddie Hinton. He's at the 15, the 10. Fumble. It goes into the end zone, but who is going to recover it? It goes out of the end zone, and what happens? They will rule. That ball was chased all the way through the end zone by both teams. And it is going to be brought back. Rule the touchback, Ted. It is ruled at touchback. It was now left up to the defense. And they were true to the task. Morton takes the snap, drops back to throw. And there's Roy Hilton. He gets the pass away, and it's intercepted by Rick Folk. He's at the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5, down to the 2-yard line. Roy Hilton came in there and put the great rush on Craig Morton. Hilton deflected that ball as Morton threw it. Rick Folk picked it out of the air and ran it down to the 3-yard line, and it's first and goal to go for the Baltimore Colts. Little-known players have habits of becoming key figures in games like this. In Super Bowl V, it was Lion cast off Tom Nowatzki. Morrow has the team at the line. Takes the snap. The handoff to Nowatzki. Hits over left tackle. He's got a yard or so. Curry over the ball at center. Morrow counts it down. Again, it's Nowatzki. He slams into the end zone for a touchdown. And it's now a 13-12 football game, and it's up to Jimmy O'Brien to tie it up with the extra point. Morrow will hold. O'Brien. Gets set. Puts it up there. It is good, and we have a tie football game. The clock was now a factor. With four minutes to go, the Cowboys were forced to punt. The ball was downed on the Baltimore five, and in three plays, the Colts could move only five yards. It was under two minutes remaining when Dallas took over on the Colt 48. Two straight losses resulted in a second and 35 situation. Morton was forced to throw, and the Colt lassos were ready. The ball is at the Cowboy 27-yard line. They have lost considerable yardage here. It is second down and many, many yards to go. Morton rolls out to the right. Gets the pass away down the sideline. Intercepted by Mike Curtis at the 25, the 20, down to the 23-yard line. The Colts have the football. They bounced off Reeves' hands, I think. Uh, I'm drifting over. We're in the... I'm just drifting over trying to help with the tackle, and the ball is just lucky to land right in my hands. I couldn't help but catch it. And then I looked around to see where everybody was, and I gave my old fullback move and started moving out, trying to get as close as I could. But anyway, I fell down. No, I didn't want to fumble. That was it. <laughs> as the seconds ticked away, Norm Bulash moved the ball to the center of the field, and in came O'Brien. On the sideline, easygoing Jimmy Orr had tried to soothe the rookie kicker. Uh, Obi was a little nervous over on the sideline. I kept talking to him, trying to soothe him down a little bit, and you know. I told him even though we, even if we missed it, we could come back and uh, play it overtime. And I thought once we tied it up 13-13, it was our ball game. With nine seconds reading on the clock, the kid with the artist toe swung his right leg, and as the ball floated through the uprights four seconds and 32 yards away, the bitter memories of Super Bowl three went up in smoke. Nine seconds showing on the clock. The Cowboys and the Colts all tied up at 13-13. It is a 32-yard field goal attempt. Morrow is kneeling. O'Brien is ready. There is the snap. The kick is up. It is long enough. It is good! A 32-yard field goal by Jimmy O'Brien. It is good! Final score, 
Colts 16, Cowboys 13. Baltimore had fumbled four times, threw three interceptions, played without the great Unitas, and still were champions. It was that kind of game and that kind of year. And for the rookie coach, a quiet but effective leader, an opportunity to prove that actions speak louder than words. The uh, players out there on both teams did a fine job and gave all, of the, all the excitement the fans wanted. They gave them good football. Uh, you, don't, you don't play with the words, you play in the field. That's where it counts. For retiring Billy Ray Smith, a simple but honest farewell. Well, it might not have been the most exciting game we ever played, but it was enough to tear your nerves up, I'll tell you that. So I want to tell all my friends in Baltimore, hello, we're bringing home the bacon, and I'll see you when we get back. Adios. For Senator Bill Curry, a veteran of two previous Super Bowls, it was also something very special. I've been on a couple of world champion teams with the Packers, and that was wonderful, and I love those guys, but I don't think I've ever been on a team where it was quite so difficult. And I think the more difficult things are, the more you appreciate them. And perhaps tight end John Mackey summarized the feelings of all the Colts when he said, It's good to be a champion. You can make money working, but uh, you can't walk down the street and have them call you a champion unless you earn it on the field. The writers branded the Colts a team of destiny, a well-balanced unit seemed to play just well enough to win. Win they did as their 14 victories will attest. A team that refused to give up, that meshed the character of men like Morrow, Unitas, Mackey, and even Tom Matty into a relentless drive to a Super Bowl victory. The crusade was complete. The Baltimore Colts, world champions.